when you rent. After three round trips out to Ripley, the problem with the initial takeoff where it flat spots is still present, but it's ever slight now. It's not as bad and it isn't as often, it's intermittent. So we must be getting close. Bob did a lot of work that he probably didn't have to do for me, uh, trying to investigate the problem. We discovered the vacuum advance was stuffed, so we bought a new diaphragm for that, and we had to um, break loose the seized, uh, what do you call it, breaker plate, or, I think it's called, or a breaker, where the weights and everything move for your vacuum advance. So we got all that going. We discovered that timing needed to be advanced. That helped as well. So all of those things have reduced this troublesome problem when taking off. I've spoken to a few mechanic mates and some other people who are pretty well rounded when it comes to um, dealing with old cars and a few of them have made the same suggestion that perhaps the coil could be a little bit of an issue and maybe the ignition condenser could be adding to the problem. So to eliminate all possibilities I'm going to today replace those two items and the sump has started weeping after doing some driving. So I will attempt to swap that over today. It doesn't look as easy as I thought. There's plenty of room to get under there, but the bell housing on the gearbox looks like it's in the way and we've got the diff to deal with as well. The, the main point with this is it's nearly 40 years old. Finding parts is, is, is very difficult and it's been sitting, as I said, so a, a couple of people suggested it just needs to be driven so that, I don't know, it loosens up, I guess. That's sort of how I, the analogy I'm thinking of. Anyway, stop talking, Adam. Let's get to work. Not a difficult task. Simply loosen the bracket. Check that the coils match. That's a good thing. Uh, I sanded off the connections. Put in the new one. Button it up nice and tight. Reconnected the coil. Gave her a quick start to make sure it was still working. Then I moved on to the ignition condenser. Not too hard. Two screws again. Loosen her off. Remove the old condenser. Drop in the new one and screw it up nice and tight. Job done. Well, wouldn't you know it, as I'm pulling apart a few things, I look down and I've noticed a tiny puddle of bright green coolant. Not good. Oi, that's coolant. What the fuck is that doing down there? Fuck you. You fucking piece of shit car. Where the fuck did that drop come from? Just in the middle of nowhere. That's a fucking new radiator. Once I'd finished with the distributor, I did a bit of investigating. And um, my $400 brand new radiator that's done less than 400 kilometers is leaking from the bottom seam. My best bet is that under pressure, there's a bit of brazing maybe because it's a brass radiator, sort of really old, old school, not like the plastic ones of today. Uh, I'd say a bit of brazing's missing maybe in a seam and under pressure, it's working its way out. Well, I'm pissed off. To go back to the manufacturer now is gonna take weeks to sort out. So I'm using liquid steel to layer up over that seam, let it go rock hard. Uh, so I've drained the coolant and I've got to let it sit for a day or so and then put the coolant back in and check that the leak is resolved. So I'm being open and transparent with the new owner. Uh, he's aware of it uh, and a couple of other things. That's all I can do. Anyway, I've run some weld over it. We'll let it cure up and uh, should be good. Moving right along, it was time to address the sump gasket. So I dropped the oil, removed all of the bolts and um, discovered that, yeah, the sump wouldn't come off. At some point, it looks like or feels like that that sump has been glued on. I'll get rid of this. So I don't want to open up a bigger can of worms and not be able to put this back together or not be able to get it off and start damaging the sump. So I'm going to throw the sump gasket in with the truck and I'll make the purchaser aware. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go buy some uh, proper sealant and I'm going to seal it up from the outside. It's not the best approach, 
but it's better than it leaking or, or, or weeping. So I'm gonna go and get some of that. Bugger, nothing's easy. What I'm gonna do now is, seeing as I've taken the oil out, I'm gonna put some fresh oil in because the other oil's done about 300 kilometers. The engine could have had a bit of contaminant in it from previously, because when I did the first oil change, it was pretty horrid. So for the benefit of the new owner, I'm gonna put brand new oil in it again after about 300 Ks. Pretty good. Unable to source an original radio, I decided to knuckle down and fix the existing one that was in the truck and then rock out to some cool tunes. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the little vlog series. One more to go. While you're out there, find a bite, fix it, flip it, have some fun along the way and remember rushing. Ciao.